coming up on July the 13th. It's a uh, very nice event coming up to the Tom's River area at the Ritaco Center in Tom's River. It is um, the Doomsday Defense versus the fans. The Dallas Cowboys, one of the more hated teams in the area, will be in the area to showcase and uh, be here for a great cause. It's called the Gift for Life Foundation. It's Gift for Life foundation.org. Everson Walls is the head of that and it's his foundation and the upcoming Doomsday Dallas shootout on July 13th at the Rotaco Center in Tom's River, New Jersey. He will be a part of that along with DeMarcus Ware, Sam Hurd, uh, himself, DeMarcus Spears, um, Chris Canty, along with some other great Dallas Cowboy players. It, it's hard for me to say great Dallas Cowboy players, but he was one of them. Uh, we will talk with Everson Walls here uh, in just a little bit uh, as we were getting him on the line. He's a former uh, Cowboy, uh, former New York Giant, former Cleveland Brown, um, four-time Pro Bowler, four-time All-Pro selection, a Super Bowl champion, led the NFL in interceptions in 1981 with 11, led the NFL in interceptions in 1982 with seven, led the NFL in interceptions in 1985 with nine, um, he is a guy who is also has an interesting legacy, one of the more prolific and decorated defensive backs to ever play the game. Statistically, in the area, may turn their nose to the event, but we invite you to at least give it a shot, and we bring in Everson Walls, who will be hosting the Dallas Doomsday Shootout July 13th at the Tom's River Rotaco Center, and he joins me now here on the Mike Gill Show. Hey, Everson. How's it going, Mike? Okay, how are you? Good, good, good. I'm happy to have, happy to be on, man. Happy to be on. It's great to have you with us, and this is a great event, uh, July 13th, and it's uh, going to be helping out your Gift for Life Foundation, and it's going to be a good opportunity for Eagle fans to take a look at the uh, rival Cowboys up close and personal. Ah, that's right. You know, you can always tell a good football team by how good their off-season basketball team is. <laughs> so, you know, these guys, you know, they, 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 that's when they really show their athletic prowess. So I was... Uh, I'm looking forward to coaching against these guys because I know their strengths and I know their weaknesses. So I'm gonna I'm gonna beat them this time. You know the Eagles put together a good team. Donovan played some college college basketball at Syracuse. They they'd be hard pressed to uh, to think that they would lose that game. Now, you, you know when you look at it, uh, even back in the day when I played with the Cowboys, we always thought we had one of the best off season basketball teams. We actually played against Larry Johnson one time when he was in college, and we beat his college team. So. I always brag about that whenever people ask about it. <laughs> That's that great UNLV team you're talking about, right? No, 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 no. I wish we. I wish I could say that. We're talking about his uh, junior college team in oh. Odessa, Texas. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you beat that team. That was a pretty good team, that UNLV No, team. no, no. I wouldn't say. <laughs> no, we weren't that good. If, I, if we were that good, then I would have joined their uh, – I would have joined them in the NBA. <laughs> uh, it's again, it is the uh, Doomsday Dallas Shootout, July 13th. That's going to be at Tom's Rivers Rotaco Center, uh, and that's going to help uh, the Gift for Life Foundation dot org is the website. Everson Walls is my guest here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, we, we, we talk, of course, this is Eagle Country down here, so a lot of people remember you from hating you not once but twice, both the Cowboys and the Giants. And I'm wondering what some of your memories were. You played at the Vet. Which, what was that like for an opposing player to come in with A as a Giant and B as a Cowboy? And it sounds like we might have lost Everson there. Uh, bad connection for him. We'll try to get him back on the line. Uh, it is 3.53, the Mike Gill Show on ESPN Radio 1450. I know that he was uh, in a bad cell. Okay. I wanted to get your, you played as a Cowboy and a Giant at Veteran Stadium. I wanted to see if the fans treated you any differently if you were a Giant or a Cowboy. Were they worse on Giants or worse on Cowboys? How was it playing as a vet as one of those two teams? Oh, you know what? I don't care who it was that played in the vet, in that stadium. I, I just hated the whole, uh, the whole Philadelphia scene. <laughs> you know, to this day, I won't go back to Philadelphia, man. These guys, they are tough on everybody. Tough on Dr. J. Tough on Santa Claus. Stuff on Mike Smith, but I have to say that uh, they really hated the Cowboys worst of all. And I think that was uh, pretty evident when uh, Michael Irvin got hurt. Yeah, and you know we weren't sure if the guy was even going to get up, and they're already you know giving him a, not him a standing ovation, but the whole situation a standing ovation. So 
Yeah, when you start talking about Philadelphia fans, I mean, isn't that the first stadium that actually had a jail cell yes. underneath yes. the stadium? Yes, it was. Isn't that their claim to fame? That is one of their claims to fame. Let me ask you this. Another claim to fame, many people remember the snowball game. Were you a part of that? Yes, I was. As a matter of fact, I got hit by one. <laughs> I got hit by one. And, and that's about, you know, this is stuff that's coming up. You're bringing all this stuff up, and I'm getting kind of angry, you know. Well, I got hit. So, I got so you start bringing that stuff up, man. That 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 reinforces my my hatred for the uh, Philadelphia team. I got hit by a snowball in that game as a spectator as well. So you and I have something in common. <laughs> Um, I also, we'll, we'll, we'll try to hit on a couple of quick topics while we only have a couple of moments here. You were also in that famous game with Dwight Clark and the Cats. What are some memories you have of that? Well, you know what? That game was, uh, a lot of people are so upset about that game. Of course, I was too. But when you look at the uh, historic uh, situation, uh, the implications of it all, uh, me playing a, a, a decent game uh, and the outcome of it being so exciting, you know, I, I was really proud to be a part of that game. Now, of course, the, the outcome of it was something that I didn't uh, really uh, care to care for. Too much. Right. But I got to say, when you play in a game like that and you do all you can, I mean, you do all you can, and then you turn out to be successful in some instances, to me, you know, I look at that as, uh, as just something that uh, I, will, I, will, I would never want to change. I would never want to change. Uh, Everton Walls is my guest. Let me give the website out real quick. It's CowboysHoops.com if you want more information on July 13th. Doomsday um, defense against the fans. That's at the Rotaco Center in Tom's River. Real quick. You got to tell them who's going to be there. That's going to be uh, guys Grammar State University, Jason Hatcher. You've got the Demarcus Ware. You're going to have some good players. Terrence Newman's going to be there. So we're going to have some good players going to be in the game. Chris Canty as well. A lot of Cowboys current day uh, going to be there. And uh, also, I want to mention the website, uh, giftforlifefoundation.org for Everson. And I want to, real quick, we got about 30 seconds. Who was, it, sure. who was the hardest to play for, Landry, Parcells, or Belichick? The hardest to play for was by far Tom Landry, no doubt about it. He, he was, was the a guy that he didn't have a sense of humor at all. So he wasn't going to think, he doesn't think about lighting up practice at all. <laughs> you know, he doesn't tell jokes, he's not funny, and he's all the way serious. But you learn a lot from a guy like that. You learn how to be disciplined. And that's definitely what he taught. So he was the toughest out of those three. He was the toughest out of those three. Bill was about a fun, though. Oh, yeah? No, and that would be Parcells, not Belichick. <laughs> oh, Bill Parcells. Bill had a sense of humor, yeah. but Parcells, uh, Belichick did not. Did not, <laughs> right, right, right. Was, so, so you were the tough. You guys would know that. That holds true. I think that holds true to today as well. <laughs> hey, Everson, we, we, we're cutting short on time, but hopefully uh, this event's coming up in uh, about three weeks from now. Hopefully we can have you on again before to talk about it more. I look forward to it. Thanks a lot, guys. Absolutely. That's uh, Everson Walls. It's Dallas Doomsday Shootout, July 13th at the Rotaco Center in Tom's River. Uh, there's so much more we can get to with him, but we'll try to get him back on the line as this tournament gets closer. You can be a part of it by logging on to CowboysHoops.com, you Cowboy fans in the area. He does not like Philadelphia. He was not a big fan of Philadelphia. He's getting angry at Philadelphia. He was checking into his hotel right now. That's why we had to kind of cut short with him. Sorry about that, everybody, if you were enjoying that conversation. We'll bring Everson Walls back on in the future to talk more about his time with the Cowboys and the Giants and playing against the Eagles at the bet.